Hey you guys, Jennifer Reese here from Good Gosh Ganache. I've got some really fun new products for you. And um, these are beautiful handmade silicone molds from Christina Laganova in Russia. And I've got a bunch of these on order and coming in for the shop um, so that hopefully they'll be available for y'all to purchase soon. Um, these are molds are beautiful. They're huge. This one's eight by eight and they produce these really gorgeous molded fondant textural pieces that are just awesome for all aspects of cake decorating. I mean, even cook, cookie decorating. These molds are great. Um, the quality is fantastic. I'm super impressed with that. Um, they're very flexible, but super sturdy, easy to clean. Um, and I'm just really over the moon excited, happy with these. So today I'm gonna show you how to apply this molded fondant texture to the sides of your cake. And I'm gonna show you sort of the paneling method of doing it. Um, and then I'm gonna actually take this to the next level by painting over this design with some poppy paints later on. So hopefully y'all will stay tuned for that as well. But first let's just start with applying our molded pieces to a seven inch cake tier. Um, my tier here is seven inches in diameter and probably a little bit taller than six inches tall. Let's see. Yeah, we're almost right at seven inches tall, which is fine because the mold, this particular mold that we're using is rain in the forest and it is eight by eight inches. So that gives us some great room for um, trimming off any excess at the bottom. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how to, how to, prepare this mold for use. As you can probably tell, I've already, I've already used this mold once, right? Because I created this piece. Uh, but when you do get these in, when they come in the mail, what you're gonna wanna first do is give them a good washing with warm soapy water and a sponge, and then get them really, really super dry, okay? Uh, once they're really dry, and I recommend usually I'll wash mine the day before, or even a few hours before, because water does collect in these little areas, and you don't want the mold to be wet when you use it, because your fondant will stick, all right? So make sure it's really dry. And then I've got some cornstarch here, and one of my favorite tools is actually just a, a makeup blush brush and I get these all over the place sometimes at TJ Maxx or at Five Below or you know wherever things are on sale the dollar store you just have to be careful not to buy ones that are super cheap because otherwise the bristles can come out and you don't want that to get into your fondant or gum paste or whatever you're using um, but I think this one was like you know four or five dollars and it's a great brush Okay, so I'm just dusting and getting in all those tiny cracks and crevices. And then I'm gonna dump out any extra and set this down ready to go. All right, so I've got some fondants here waiting for me. I've already conditioned my fondant. Um, as with any fondant or edible, um, like gum paste, medium like that, you do need to condition it, of course, so you'll wanna give it some some kneading and a little bit of shortening and some cornstarch uh, just to get all the gums working and keep it really flexible. All right, and I actually added some white Americolor gel to mine as well because it, it just helps make it a little bit more opaque and it's a brighter white look, okay? So I'm gonna dust my work surface with some cornstarch. In this case, you can use a little bit more than usual, that's fine because it's gonna be going directly, push directly down into our mold. And we wanna make sure it doesn't stick. When you're using these eight by eight molds, it's actually really cool because the rolling pin, your small Wilton rolling pin fits almost perfectly inside that mold. So what I'm gonna do is start rolling this piece of fondant out till it's about the approximate shape size as my eight by eight mold. Um, you don't wanna go too thin here because you do need to have a little bit of bulk to your fondant in order for it to take all the impressions. Um, but I would say at its thinnest, I've gone about maybe a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up this piece of fondant, lay it right over my mold, and now I'm just gonna start pushing down 
and areas in order to really help that fondant stick in place. We want it to stay right where we put it, okay? Now I'm gonna do some light pressure with the rolling pin just to remove any excess areas. You can peel them away with your hands just by sort of rubbing against that hard edge of the silicone. Anywhere that you feel it's a little bit thicker than it should be, roll that away a bit. We really do want to have a nice, even thickness for the whole molded piece. That way everything aligns and nothing looks too lumpy on our cake. Not too much pressure because you don't want to actually pull the mold out, the fondant out of the mold with your rolling pin accidentally and then push it back in because sometimes you can get secondary marks and lines from where the mold laid in a different piece, in a different spot than it was the first time. Okay. All right, so now that I have removed all of that excess, I'm gonna wrap it back up. Okay, now I do have some areas that are thicker than others. You can see that just from where I laid my fingers and pressed down harder in some areas than others. So I'm gonna go over this real quickly with the rolling pin one more time. Now that I can see where the edges of the, of the mold are a little bit better. And you can actually, any little frayed rough edges, you can pull them back into the mold cavity and then press down just to smooth that out a bit. And if you still have some rough edges when you pull this guy out of the mold, you can trim them down with a knife. It's, it's really not too big of a, a problem. All right, so now I need to fond it smoother. And I'm just gonna really gently press down throughout the whole mold to make sure that everything has a really nice deep impression and that I have a th even thickness of fondant throughout the mold. See right here, I feel like it was a little bit thicker than it should have been. So I can pull that extra off. smooth things out a little bit. It's worth putting the extra time in here to make sure everything took and all the impressions took really well because when you pull it out of the mold it's <laughs> it's much harder to put it back in and reform those areas than it is just to get them done right to begin with. If your fondant smoother is sticking, you can give a little dust of cornstarch on the back. Okay, and you can also very gently turn the mold over and look through that silicone to see if there's any areas that might need a little bit more attention. You just want to be sure you don't displace the fondant while you do that because again, it can cause uh, little little markings from where it didn't quite lay in the same spot as it was the first time. Okay. Okay, so for most of the molds uh, that Christina makes, it's really simple and easy to just turn this guy over and release the silicone from the molded piece. However, it can also be really useful to stick these in the freezer too, um, especially for the molds that have deeper uh, impressions or more detail, simply because those details can get stuck in those little areas of the mold. And then as you release the fondant from the mold, it will warp or pull the pattern and keep things 
out of line, which you, you know you definitely don't want. So just to make things 10 times easier on myself, I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the freezer for about 10 minutes, maybe five, we'll see how it goes. Um, and then as soon as I pull it out, it'll still be nice and stiff. It'll hold its shape really well and I can apply it to the side of the cake without creating any stretching or warping. I have just removed this mold from the freezer. It's nice and cool. I'm gonna pull this cake up here. And I'm going to, I'm just very gently, you can see this here, very gently pulling back the mold and I'm flexing it as I go to allow that piece just to pop right out. And when you get down here, you gotta give it a little bit more control At least there's some little sequins or sprinkle type shapes here in the corner and they have to be released a little bit slower just to keep everything intact. And then I'm actually paneling this onto the cake upside down. So what I've done is covered the top. This is the bottom of my cake. I covered the top with fondant and I'm going to <clears throat> align the bottom edge of this right with the bottom edge, which is actually the top edge of my cake. I'm going to trim away any excess little pieces here that might cause it not to line up perfectly. <clears throat> Decide which edge of the mold I want to be the top of my cake. And then I'm simply going to lay that right in place. And I'm pushing just very gently. You don't want to apply too much pressure because you don't want to take away from the beautiful pattern on the mold. Okay. Nice, make sure everything's lined up perfectly and adhered well. And this is another great reason to use a cold mold is because the colder it is, the, the easier it is for you to work with without squishing or creating impressions um, or, you know, stretching the pattern, right? So again, this was just a seven inch ganache covered cake tier and I covered it with, sh with a layer of shortening to help everything stick. And the nice thing about working with shortening is you can remove the piece really easily if something goes wrong. But now I'm going to trim away any excess mold that I have. I'm gonna use a sh really sharp X-Acto blade for this. And I'm holding I'm holding my blade flush with the cake board and pushing inward. That'll remove the excess. And then I just give this a quick push just to make sure that everything is still secured to that ganache. And now I'm gonna mold one more piece and adhere that so that I can show you how you can tile these patterns together. Make sure your edges, the ends of your mold, really do sit flush with the cake. It'll really help with the process later. Okay. All right, I'm gonna mold another piece and I'll be right back with you. So most of these designs do panel really beautifully. They, they tile, they lay next to each other and the pattern continues really nicely. So what we're gonna do is flip this guy over and I'm actually gonna be focusing more on pulling the fondant or the mold away from the fondant than I am the fondant away from the mold, if that makes sense. So I'm literally just peeling the silicone back and flexing it back so that it can release that fondant really easily. Perfect. It's got a nice molded piece here, and then I'm gonna trim up any edges that may not sit smooth. And I try to keep everything the same each time, so I'll try to line up um, the mold the same way I did the time before. So I'll look for you know, pieces that match up. So I know that this flower right here is the same as this flower, so I know how to tile it so that it's repetitive. So I'm gonna pick this piece up, 
lay it right here next to the first one and just very gently push to help the mold stick to that shortening that's on my ganache cake. And then I'm gonna come in here where my two pieces meet up and make sure those fall in perfectly next to one another. And this is actually a lot easier to do without gloves. But if you need a tool, you can come in here with the back of a cell pin or Dresden tool or something just to give you some extra length to your finger and smooth that all together. Okay. All right, so now to remove the excess, I've got this pushed nice and flat against the cake. And I'm gonna use a really sharp X-Acto blade and I'm pushing in towards the center of my cake board and I'm actually holding the knife flush to the cake board so that I know I'm cutting at a 90 degree angle. Pushing inward in short, quick cuts in order to release that extra fondant. And then if I did happen to do any stretching, I wanna make sure that this line is nice and straight up and down so that the next piece lays in beautifully. And ta-da. So a nice continuous technique and I'm actually going to paint over this mold I'm going to paint the flowers and once I do that that seam will be absolutely gone you won't even notice it all right